Now, I've just uh, done the uh, half-blind dovetails for the top three drawers, and it just so happened, in order to get these right, I needed uh, exactly four of these finger pieces all closely uh, grouped together, and that worked perfectly. But for all of my other drawers, it's not going to work out to be an exact uh, group of finger pieces all tightly packed together. I'm going to have to have some which are split open and therefore uh, spaces put between them. So I'm now going to work out the strategy uh, for my drawers and the pedestals. I've got here the front of the bottom drawer from one of the pedestals. It's the widest of the drawers. And I've mounted it in the jig as though I was about to make a cut. In other words, it's justified this way. And it's also uh, up against uh, the front where it should be. And it's clamped in place. I'm now going to work out how many of these fingers I need to be just short of the edge of the board. And I'll take away that one. I still need to take away one more. And there, there I am. I've got six fingers. I'm just short of the edge of the board. I'm now going to move this right-hand one so that it is flush just here with the edge of the board. I'm now going to move over one and a half pieces to be next to it. And I've now created a gap here. I'm going to measure this gap. And that gap is 16 millimeters. So I'm going to set my caliper to 8 millimeters. I'm going to move this over so that I've got a gap there of 8 millimeters. I'm now going to tighten that one in place. Now, in theory, if I move those others like so, so I've now got some symmetry here, this gap is, again, 8 millimeters. So I can now tighten all of these. And now we've got a symmetrical layout. We've got a full finger, a split finger, a full finger, full finger. So that's our nice symmetrical layout. And I'll do the same approach for each of the other two sizes of draw in the pedestals. Now what we've got to do is to work out what size distance piece we need. And that's simply done by measuring and then cutting pieces of the appropriate size. And then you have to round off uh, the edges which will be at the front to conform with the shape of the jig finger piece. And there we go. So that's now the jig completely ready for our next set of cuts. Well, first of all, let me just say that uh, if you have a Lee jig, you really must get yourself one of these vacuum attachments. It really makes a huge difference. And there's no need for any form of uh, vacuum attachment on your writer. Now, let's have a quick look at this piece. So there we have the uh, design we've just created. You can see that the, uh, the gap here is more than it is there. And so I think that will be quite a pleasing design. And there's our first example of the uh, completed joint. Uh, and you can see these wider tails here look rather nice. Quite a nice pattern. Now, at the rear of the drawers, we're going to have through dovetail joints. And I've just had my practice go at making through dovetails using the lead jig. And it seems to work quite well. But I've learned one or two uh, lessons in the process. Now, when we were doing the half-blind dovetails, uh, there was no uh, debate about uh, which way round uh, your pieces of wood would go to form the joint. But when you're doing a through dovetail, it is possible that the piece at the side can be orientated the wrong way around. And for the eagle eyes amongst you, uh, here with my little test piece is how I got it wrong, because that's the way uh, the half-blind dovetail goes, and this is the way that the through dovetail goes. So you can see it's possible to make the most amazing shapes if you're not careful. Now, it's important when you're doing the tails for the through dovetails that on the jig you have the inside of the drawer facing towards you. And it's easy with these 
to discover which is the inside and outside because with the half-blind dovetails, the inside is the side where the rounded part of the dovetail appears. Now, when we're doing the pins for the through dovetails, it's the outside of the uh, drawer that faces towards you. So this is the, my draw back, and this is the outside of that draw back. And when you finish doing one, just rotate it like this to do the other side and fit it in like so. So there we go. I've just pushed this together. Uh, obviously no glue because there's no uh, draw bottom yet, uh, but um, that's looking pretty good. I quite like the fact that all the joints are nice and even here. They look tidy at the ends and uh, that's our middle drawer for the top. Uh, almost ready. Well, I'm now ready to do the final uh, drawer or pair of drawers at the bottom of each of the pedestals and I've set up my finger templates in the same fashion as before. Uh, this time I'm using six of them uh, with the uh, second one in split like so. That follows the usual pattern. I've just checked uh, that my uh, dovetail cutter is at the right uh, depth. Um, I've checked that I'm on uh, 26 or less here and here. Um, and I'm following the instructions from the Lee dovetail jig to the letter. Beautiful instructions. And I've now turned the finger template round. I've fitted the straight bit in the writer. I'm just going to check that its depth is set correctly. Yep, spot on. So I'm now ready to go. Incidentally, the, in order to do so many different changes of the cutters, what I've done is on my block of wood, if you look at this, uh, I've got a setting for uh, both the dovetail bit and also the straight bit. In fact, they're actually at the same depth, so I could have used just the one, but at the time I wasn't really thinking. <laughs> and this block has got a hole in the middle, and that I use to stand the writer up at the back of things like so when it's not in use. Fine, I'll just check that. That's fine, I don't need to do any adjustments. That is the outside and I flip it round like so. The draw bottoms are done and I've given them two coats of satin polyurethane on the part of the drawer uh, that is on the inside but not the bottom and I'm now about to uh, get ready to cut the channel in the draw pieces to take the bottoms. Now it's really important at this stage that you have a scheme for making sure that you cut the channel in the right place. And what I've done is I've done a trial assembly of this drawer and I'm now putting a mark where the channel is going to go on the inside, of course, uh, of each of the pieces. So there is no doubt in my mind which part of these pieces I have to put the channel into. So that's the last of the uh, marking out done and I've checked everything and I'm happy. So we're ready to cut the channels. Now when we put the channel in these side pieces, I've got to make sure uh, that the channel doesn't run into the joint itself at this end. And I've also got to be careful at the other end as well. So, so what I've done is I've set the two fences here at the precise distance to keep uh, the cutter from going beyond the end. So if I allow uh, this to go level with that end bit of fence, then uh, the cutter won't traverse the hole. And similarly, if I were doing the mirror, mirror piece, first of all, we make sure our mark is there, and then we turn this over, and we're going to start with the board pushed up against the fence, but not quite at the end position. So I'm lowering down now. And that's the board lowered down. And I'm now going to move it this way until this line here is lined up with 
the start of this fence because that's my marking scheme. So I'm doing it very gently, keeping pressure that way and keeping it flat as well. And that's it at the start. And now you're going to push this through. And at this end, I want to get this line here level with this line here on the fence. And then go back off and then carefully lift whilst keeping this push that way. And there is the channel. Now before I assemble these drawers, uh, remember they've had one coat of Osmo Poly X. I'm giving them a light uh, rub over with uh, the equivalent of a Scotch Brite. Uh, now, actually this has got a bit of checkered history. This uh, was left over from when I did a review of the Festal Conturo, and it's what they use as a polishing cloth uh, for uh, some edging. And this uh, is the Abernet. Uh, uh, abrasive holder uh, which has got the vacuum uh, attachment uh, here uh, which came from the woodworkers workshop so uh, it's a mixture that I'm using but you can use anything in order to get the, the job done that I just check and uh, that is absolutely spot on now I've written about this I've said it in all of my videos you know if you get good tools it all comes together nicely combination this time of Festool and the Lee Jig I think that's absolutely super love it well all of the drawers are assembled and now we just got to go through the finishing process it's in several stages the first stage, using my Veritas low angle jack plane, will be to trim off any excess here from these through dovetails uh, and also check for any other oddities and then make sure that the drawer fits nice and snugly and there's no requirement to ease it at all uh, with the plane. When that's done, I've got to check for serious defects where uh, there might be a knot hole that needs a little bit of filler or, or even, uh, dare I say it, uh, a little bit of chip out from one of these uh, dovetails. It does happen. And so I've got two flavours of uh, my Osmo Ready Mix filler. Uh, one which is walnut flavour and the other, this one calls itself maple birch, which is a close enough colour uh, to this chestnut. So just in case. Then after that and when that's dried, if I've had to apply it, I need to go through several stages of sanding. Then um, once that is done and I'm absolutely happy uh, with the fit, I'm then going to apply my uh, Poly X to the drawers. Even though all of my drawers are brilliantly made, <laughs> they're marked clearly uh, with a little indicator so I know which is left and right. Because right, my setup is very simple here. I've got a couple of the uh, sustainers under here just to provide a bit of support. Uh, this is held in my vise. I'm now going to trim off the excess from these uh, rear through dovetails.